from the cover of your novel, I would guess that it was about sheep. Just how badly would I be wrong? <laughs> well, there are sheep in the story. This is, you know, undeniable. But uh, it's not really about sheep per se. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, the, the MacGuffin, the thing that moves the story along, is very much in play here. The, the sheep, uh, or what, what eventually we know as the sheep in the story, is uh, very much a MacGuffin. You know, and what we're getting in exchange for that MacGuffin is the entire tableau, the entire world of this universe. There are very strange sheep. I mean, they're, they're, they were strange in, at the outset because uh, they were genetically engineered sheep. And this particular sheep in, in the story is... Uh, even more genetically out there than uh, the ordinary, normally modified genetic sheep would be. So it's 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 enough to say that when the, when the sheep is revealed in the story, it does sort of take people by surprise, which of course is the point. So, so is there a scene or part of the novel that you're most fond of? Is it that sheep reveal, or is it some <laughs> other? Uh... And there's the sheep. No, actually, the one scene that I like the best. Uh, and the whole thing. Well, there's the first chapter, which is its own thing, uh, which I'm very proud of uh, as as a writer. And uh, to go into just very briefly mention it, it uh, has one character who uh, dispatches another character in, in a uh, fairly original way. You know, I was actually very pleased with that because I, I scoured the literature, you know, in science fiction going, has anybody published something like this before, and uh, apparently nobody has. So, you know, it's always nice to be able to be the first in your genre to, to pull something off. Well, speaking of the readers, given that you have uh, strange sheep and unusual death in this novel, <laughs> what was the, what, what's the reader reaction been like, and has any of it surprised you? Is there anything that's been out there? The, the great thing about the book is that you know from the first sentence whether or not it's a book you want to read. Uh, and it was very, it's very clear, uh, you open the book, you look at the first sentence, and if the first sentence says to you, oh, I want to read more, then, then I've pretty much got them. It's, it's very binary in that respect, you know, you, I either have them or, or I don't. So I've been very fortunate that the people who've read the story um, have been very happy about it. One of the things that I tried to do with this is, it's meant to be a funny book, um, but it's funny in a way... Um, that is not often done in science fiction. Science fiction humor tends to be of the um, farcical nature, um, like the Hitchhiker's Guide. Because once people find something that they know that, that works, um, they continue to do that. Um, this one is a lot more informed by, uh, for example, crime fiction, um, like Elmer Leonard or Carl Hyacin, um, and even also the dialogue in, in movies. So I wanted to try a little bit of that and bring that into science fiction, which is a genre that I love. So the response to that has also been very positive. Are there any influences that uh, your readers might be surprised by? I think the uh, influences of uh, 1920s humorists would mm -hmm. be probably a surprise to them. Uh, I love Robert Benchley, I love James Thurber, I love Dorothy Parker, who I don't get to incorporate very much into right. my yeah. work, but certainly the idea of their uh, rapid-fire wit, their uh, precocity with the language, the idea that they have uh, a skill uh, that is a verbal and a written skill that just gets right to the heart, is, is, is fascinating, and just the way that they play with language. I mean, if you've ever read any of uh, Robert Benchley's little humor pieces, you know, The Treasurer's Report or something like that, and it's just so, it's just so beautiful, and, and uh, you want to bring that in. Um, also, uh, quite honestly, again, going back to movies, um, a lot of the back-and-forth dialogue, of, you know, Ben Hecht, you know, His Girl Friday, uh, those sorts of things. I've always admired them, and they're fun to do, and they're a great way to tell a story because it engages people in your characters, and it also means that you don't have to describe the characters, you don't have to tell people what the characters' attitudes or anything are because it comes out in how they speak to each other, and I think that that's uh, very important. So those are huge influences on me. Um, 
And so it's not just it's not just science fiction, and I think that's the way it should be. I mean, even people who love science fiction or love romance or whatever genre that you love, um, I think you need to read outside of that genre, and I think you also need to uh, incorporate things you love from outside into the genre so that the genre expands. Now, um, you've been successful in, in areas other than, than, than fiction writing before, right. um, but your rise in the science fiction world has been relatively rapid. Mm -hmm. Have you personally had a chance to process it all and adjust to it yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was weird. I will, I will, I will mention this. Um, back in 2006, uh, there, was a, there was a very definite split when I got nominated for the Hugo for Old Men's War and then I was also nominated for the Campbell for Best New Writer. Um, I went to a convention just before those nominations came out uh, and then I went to a convention after those nominations came out uh, and the difference in terms of how people approached me was substantial. And that was weird because I was the same person. I hadn't put out a new book, you know, hadn't done anything different. Um, but the response was, oh, John Scalzi. And it's, it's been weird to deal with, but the nice thing is that I have family and friends who basically anybody who knows me after three weeks decides that it's part of their mission to keep my ego in check. Uh, <laughs> which is which is actually very important. There's there's not a lot that my wife will let me get away with. There's not a lot that my friends will get away, uh, let me get away with. They are happy for my success. They want me to be successful. They want me to, you know, celebrate uh, being uh, having that sort of success, but they also don't want me to be a jerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they they keep me in check. And also, you know, it's also a matter of perspective. Uh, what else, fiction or non-fiction wise, are you working on right now? Currently I'm revising an astronomy book called The Rough Guide to the Universe. The first edition came out in 2003 and uh, we're having the new edition come out next uh, March. And uh, quite a lot has been discovered between that time and now. Um, so I'm re busy revising that even as we speak. Uh, I'm also working on a, another book in the Old Man's War universe called Zoe's Tale. Uh, it is, there are three books in that universe. And this one is separate from them, so there's a trilogy, and then there will be this new book. And uh, after that, actually, I write the follow-up to Android's Dream, which is called The High Castle. So there's another Philip K. Dick reference there. We, wouldn't, we originally weren't going to have it, but then we decided... What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> well, it's good because it means that you know, I have some sort of vague idea if we get to a third book in the series, what I'll call that as well. So... Sorry, Philip K. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.